Hello, it's me again. If this is your first time here, you have no idea who I am. And honestly, if this is your second or third time here, you still probably have no idea who I am. So does it really matter? So I recently posted a video about Rachel Hollis's big comeback. You know, she's been slowly returning to social media after her big TikTok controversy. She's been on her podcast recently. And then finally she came out with a Rach talk. Um, and I basically reviewed it in the video. You can watch it here. I'll put it in the cards. Um, it basically talks specifically about that video and why I didn't like it very much. It was pretty cringe. Didn't sound like her. Her voice is really weird. But I basically just like said something that was like, do you like me? Check yes or no. <laughs> and just like some of the terminology and like the story in general just didn't seem even real. In this moment was having an internal monologue that I was like, where do I put my hands? How do I, oh my gosh, you're touching my butt. How'd that happen? Like all except I thought it was in my head and it was just, just coming out my mouth. What I think got lost in that video is why it's so annoying and why I have such a problem with this um, by looking at the story from a wider lens. It's easy to criticize Rachel and Dave Hollis because of what they're acting like on social. They're a symptom of, of the problem, which is the industry. They're rewarded financially for creating this content. So for people who don't know, Rachel has been uh, producing content for a long time. She's a blogger, an author. She wrote fictional books that did okay. And then she wrote a self-help personal kind of autobiography book called Girl Wash Your Face, which essentially gives tips and tricks to living your best life through her own stories. Um, a lot of them dealt with her then husband, now ex-husband, and their trials and tribulations, and her feeling like a bad mom, and things that a lot of women, specifically, I think, um, deal with and go through, but are, are not really apt to putting it out there. So having her talk about these topics was refreshing, and it made her unique in the space. Um, it was a little less polished, a little less um, Botoxed, if that makes sense. There were some wrinkles still left in her content. Flash forward to when Rachel um, got in some trouble. She's been in trouble a few times, not with the law, but she's been in trouble, you know, in the public eye a few times. But this most recent one, which is the one I started to comment on and get involved in because it was so egregious and showed kind of her true colors, so it seems. What is it about me that made you think I want to be relatable? which that's a total lie and complete BS. And, um, you know, she really doubled down on kind of being a jerk and like, I don't want to be next to you peasants kind of attitudes. From that point, people really got pissed. A lot of her, you know, ardent supporters blocked her, whatever, unfollowed her. And even people I know in my life that have followed her forever went to her conferences, they were deleting her. And I was like, okay, maybe this is it. Like, maybe this is kind of like the last straw. And then she went away for a little bit. She apologized once, deleted it, apologized again, left it up, and then went away. And I figured, okay, she's gonna come back at some point because now she's gotta make money, you know? That's the, that's the industry problem. Like, how do you make money now to support this company that's based on your life? And I think she's taking the politician's um, route which is act like it never happened, um, you know, the scandal or whatever, and move on. Don't acknowledge it because the more you acknowledge it, the more people are able to comment on it. Um, the more people will have something to say about that. And if you, you know, apologize again, or if you say that you're, you know, learning from your mistakes, that somehow is admitting that you're not an expert at your own life, or, you know, you lose some sort of credibility I'm not saying that's true, I think it's the opposite. And if you know you did acknowledge it, then you were living in the past and you were obsessed with negativity. And so therefore, by ignoring the problem that you caused, you are somehow bringing more positivity to the situation. That is the mindset I believe that Rachel Hollis has, that if she talks about what she did, <laughs> or how she got to that point where she was so angry, 
which rightfully so. I mean, there seems to be things going on, you know, with the timeline with her ex-husband that maybe he was, you know, pursuing a relationship before they officially announced that they were breaking up. There's, you know, a lot of things that she probably has a right to be mad about. I don't know for sure, but let's say that there is. She makes it seem like there's something that she has a right to be mad at that she's not talking about openly. Enough time has gone by and enough healing has gone by that I can tell you that there were times in this process that I hated him. That's the freaking truth. And I am positive there were times in this process that he hated me. Oh, I feel like I'm going to get myself in trouble. But like, I, I didn't want him talking about me on social. Um, I didn't want him telling stories or sharing details or wishing me happy birthday because those were things that were really only happening on social. They weren't happening behind the scenes. And I had a lot of anger about sort of acting one way publicly in a different way privately. So yeah. One thing that really bothered me in not even acknowledging the scandal that she just went through, um, she didn't acknowledge it at all in the YouTube video. She, she says like, this is my weekly show. She starts the video and says, this is my weekly show without even acknowledging that it wasn't posted <laughs> in two months. Um, which I thought was, okay, do you think we're all dumb? Like we can see that the time frame is, there has to be a reason as to why that is, but you know, it's a, it's an unspoken reason why. And I think that's makes us all feel the fans, the viewers, like you think we're stupid. So in one of the most recent episodes of her podcast, she talks about how you should check in with your goals for the year. This is like the halfway point till the, you know, 2022. She uses an example of herself, of course. She uses herself as an example. And she says, you know, this year, I haven't accomplished as much as I would like to have accomplished because I fell in love. I had a lot of creative goals for myself at the beginning of this year. Um, a lot of things that I wanted to do, create and write and work on. And I fell in love. Ooh, I can't believe I just said that on the podcast, but I did. I fell in love uh, very, very, very unexpectedly uh, in the last uh, couple of months. And do you guys, can you guys tell how like nervous that I want to like put my shirt over my head right now? Cause I just feel so nervous saying that to you, but it's true. It happened. And um, that has like I haven't created a lot of things that I wanted to create or put out in the world. I haven't written as much as I wanted to write. I haven't finished some projects that I was absolutely positive I would be done with by now. And that's really because I've been making out with someone. <laughs> I could absolutely be like producing at the highest level and then sort of fitting this in wherever it fits. But that doesn't seem like that's not who I want to be. And so I know exactly why I'm not further along on the achievement. And when I heard that, I was shocked <laughs> because number one, to me, that's a little fast. I know that's not my business, but like you were saying within one year, because June of 2020, you were still married. Um, you announced your get, you were starting the divorce process. Okay. So, you know, whether there's a couple months extra in there or not, you made it seem like you were in this really healthy, uh, strong, amazing marriage. A few months later announced you're getting divorced. And now within one year, you've fallen in love with someone else. All the more power to you. I just feel a little misled, um, by the previous two years of content that I was force fed on my Instagram feed. <laughs> so the fact that she said that she didn't accomplish as many goals as she had wanted to because she was busy making out with somebody, which is whatever. You are either so entrenched in a culture of your workplace where you've hired people who tell you that type of stuff and you truly believe it because they are really ready to manipulate your brain to keep you positive, or you are so good at giving an excuse, a really positive excuse as to why you didn't accomplish your revenue goals for your company uh, that didn't have to do with you putting down an entire working class of women in a completely unnecessary 
uh, video on TikTok of all places. You didn't hit your goals because a lot of your devoted fans that had your back through a lot of other scandals had enough. It's not because we're all jealous of you for falling in love. So for a second, let's pretend, you know, we're not taking Rachel Hollis's advice. We're just looking at her life. And what could you glean from her experience and to thinking of like the type of woman or person that you should be based on how she lives her life? Anger is bad. Sadness is only a temporary and not really necessary emotion. And if you do feel sad, you shouldn't really wallow in it. You should only appreciate the things that are good and realize that the sadness that you're feeling can be controlled by you and really is only in your head because if you control the universe that you live in and your vibrations and all that sort of stuff, then being sad really is your own fault and you're the only one that can get yourself out of sadness. It's not necessary in her mind or in her life to go out and find someone that has qualities that you're looking for. It's really only important that you have stories to tell other people about your relationship. Do I think that's healthy? Absolutely not. Do I think that she wants to tell positive stories, uplifting stories, and she just happens to talk about herself a lot? Kind of. Um, I think she's designed it that way. I mean, you can tell uplifting and positive stories about other people if you really had the desire to story tell. Um, you don't have to always talk about yourself. I think if she was to tell an authentic story about her life right now, it would be that it's probably completely fallen apart. It's been falling apart for a long time. She's been trying to make it seem like everything's okay for her children, for her business, for the life that she built. By attributing her lack of revenue goals that she has not achieved or her lack of achievement and goals generally to falling in love is the most moronic, not true thing and part of this warped toxic positivity that I've ever seen. She even talks about toxic positivity in her podcast too, that that's not what she's doing here. I know sometimes like people hear this and they're like, oh, this is like toxic positivity and you're not focusing on like, no, man. I believe, I, I mean, if you have ever come to conference with me, if you've ever come to my women's conference, you know, the entire first day is called Own Your Past. You got embroiled in a scandal that upset a lot of people that you claim to care about, right? Your fans, the number one people in your life is your kids and your fans, right? She says that she cares about her fans and her followers so much to her core that she wants them to come and visit her at her conferences. She wants them to come and buy her books and get to know her better and listen to her podcasts and buy her journals and, and be a part of her choose joy team and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so those people, you upset a lot of them, right? And people upset people all the time. It doesn't mean that you're a broken person or something's wrong with you. It means that you dropped the ball, you made a mistake, you can recover from it, but you really can only recover from it if you admit that you were wrong, that you're sorry, and that you're gonna do better next time. And when you attribute your lack of revenue and your goals, not meet, reaching your goals, to falling in love, that is not true, okay? Not at all true it's delusional and i don't think it's good for her followers who, who who aren't willing to look at the alternatives they look at someone like me that's hating on her on the internet okay i totally agree i am being a hater i don't hate her but i'm being a hater okay <laughs> that there's a difference um, but I think I'm bringing up legitimate points and she is just an example of the problem that I see with this industry and with people trying to appeal to other people for money. It only is gonna leave you horribly, horribly emotionally disturbed and mentally disturbed because not all people are gonna like you. You gotta think about it. Think about all the mass murderers, okay? This is getting weird for a second. Think of all the serial killers in the last 50 years. You gotta think, you know, these people who have committed these horrific crimes in a lot of these cases, you know, hurting children and women and 
indiscriminately shooting people, those people have fans, <laughs> okay? So to say that somebody, because other people like you, you know, people like me, so I must not be doing anything wrong, is ridiculous because no matter what you say, people are gonna hate you. No matter what you do, people are gonna like you. It just depends on which people. I don't know what my original point to that was, but <laughs> what I mean to say for this whole thing is it's not Rachel, it's not Dave, it's not the people who are living these lives that I'm so upset with. It's the culture and the, the society we live in that is making this possible. We should not allow people to sacrifice their entire life for our entertainment. That's how I feel about it. It's a shame on us that we like these posts that show their children, that we're following their tea time videos. It's disgusting. These kids that are growing up in these social media influencer lifestyles, they have like 15 photo shoots a day, half the time with professional photographers coming and taking photos of you and your parents. Like what? Can you imagine that? Think of your parents or your childhood and imagine having multiple photo shoots with professional photographers several times in a week. Or every time you go to a baseball game, your parents are putting your life out to millions of people. It must be such a weird feeling. So us as the viewers, as the audience of this, we need to do better. Rachel Hollis is doing what she is set up to do. She needs to make money. She's built this company and this lifestyle brand, and she's been rewarded for sharing these positive stories, uplifting stories, blah, blah, blah. You don't think she wants to be truthful? I don't know if she even can anymore because she has so strictly made her life this way because it makes money. That's the problem. That's how I really feel about this subject. I just watched the Bo Burnham documentary, or not doc, like the present, oh, whatever. I, I just watched Bo Burnham's Inside so I'm like very inspired to share my true feelings and like not sugarcoat because I do videos for entertainment and to make it interesting and I cut parts out that I think I'm like rambling on and on. But this video I hope comes across as this is the stuff that goes on in my brain. It's not the people. I think our people can change. It's the system that we put people in that they are only trying to work within the system that is designed for them. So they're meant to be inauthentic because how else are you supposed to sell products that you don't care about to people you don't know? You're gonna be inauthentic. <laughs> that just is what it is. And we're accepting that as a society that, oh, we're gonna use that code to buy that teeth whitening product. That's ridiculous. We need to be better. We need to say, we're done. We don't, no more. You don't need to be positive anymore. You don't need to be negative anymore. You can do whatever you want with your life. It's your life. I don't need to see it. And then just turn it off. Whew, I am sweating. Okay, well, um, that's my therapy of the day. Actually, my second therapy of the day. I had my real therapy this morning. That also probably got me going on this uh, rampage. So if you're not totally mortified by my video, then subscribe and I'll see you at the next one. Bye.